All right, welcome back to the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society in America channel on YouTube. Uh, my name is Tom Smith. I am with the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, and for the second time this month of September, I am doing one of these virtual tastings. Um, it's it's a new medium for me, so bear with me, please. Uh, I'm, I'm used to standing in front of people in person. So as, as, as just like everybody else around the country, we're, we're getting used to this new medium and me especially. So if I stumble over my words or whatever, forgive me in advance. I've had nothing to drink yet today. So I'm, I'm typically uh, a little, a little more, uh, liquid, if you will, when I'm starting an event at, at seven o'clock at night. Anyway, uh, neither here nor there. Um, Today, I have an empty glass that needs to be filled, and uh, my colleague Ben uh, was kind enough to let me get in on this unboxing situation. Now, I have been in the wine and spirits industry for about 20 years now. I had never heard of an unboxing until maybe a month ago or so, so um, I'm really excited. I've... I've never had the chance to do this. So I'm hoping I don't like injure myself with, uh, with, with the knife over here, but should be okay. Um, and what we're unboxing, I believe you can see in the title of this is a very, very special cask. So um, let's, uh, let's get right to it. I think I'm going to say a few words about it as we go along, but um, without further ado, this is the box. Everybody knows I live in apartment 2W now. Um, it's a pretty, pretty nice looking box and uh, good sturdy corrugated cardboard. We want to make sure that our special deliveries are kept nice and safe. Um, so I'm assuming there are both uh, members of the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society and non-members. Um, so before I, I really get going here, uh, um, for all you non-members out there, the, uh, the society is, um, in my humble opinion, the best whiskey club out there. We have hands down the best whiskey on the planet. I think, um, just about all from a single cask, everything cask strength and just booming with flavor. Um, so, uh, in, in any month, as part of a, as part of the club, you're, you're going to get access to anywhere between 20 and 30 new whiskeys and that's monthly. Um, so in the course of a year, you're seeing an amazing selection of single malt scotch of some grain whiskeys as well. We do a couple of blends here and there, all blended malt whiskeys from different distilleries. So no grains in those. Um, and then we venture beyond Scotland. We go to places um, like India, like Taiwan. Um, we just released a few American whiskeys as well. Um, and, you know, we're always on the lookout for amazing juice. And something tells me we got some amazing juice in here. So let's just get to it. So I'm cutting through some pretty dense tape here. Uh, our fulfillment center really goes above and beyond with packing material, much to the dismay of our budget. Um, and I got a nice looking shot here inside the box. You have kind of a box in a box. My packing slip, as you'll see, uh, I don't know if you can read that, but there's just one whiskey in it today. But this one whiskey, is pretty remarkable. So this whiskey is also remarkably wedged in this box. So, <laughs> so I am um, going to do my best to get it out here with one hand. All right. Here we are. Okay. Box number one is almost done. made it. I can't really chuck it behind me like Ben did. Um, but, uh, you know, I got some, got some business back there, but 
here we have a beautiful box within the box. So I'm just going to keep going here. I guess I'll flip it towards you. I kind of destroyed it when I pulled out of the larger one. But let's see here. Within our white box is a really gorgeous looking decorative wood box. Boom. Look at that bad boy. So this, my friends, is our latest vaults collection. Let's keep going. Of course, we want these boxes, these bottles rather, to arrive very safely. So there's a bit more packaging than you might normally find. A bit of styrofoam. We apologize, Mother Earth, but it's for a good cause. And then our last sleeve before we get to the good stuff. This is 100% poplar for all you botanists out there. Um, nice sturdy wood, burns good too. I wouldn't burn this though. Um, I would probably keep this to house this gorgeous bottle complete with the, uh, what is this, like a, a deodorizer. Um, apparently if you collect enough of these, you can chuck them on your dashboard and you don't need to turn the, uh, you know, the, the fan on to, to get rid of the uh, fog. Uh, that tip is for free. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, this is the vaults collection. Um, just to take a step back for a minute, the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society founded in 1983 by a gentleman named Pip Hills, who I uh, did my best to interview uh, a, a couple weeks ago. He's, he's an amazing fella, and he basically started the single cast revolution in Scotland. Um, you know, as, as many of you may have um, garnered from the interview, he, he saw quite a bit of pushback at the beginning of things, but uh, he and his small group of whiskey lovers kind of soldiered on and, and while they did meet some obstacles, really started what has blossomed into not only our club, but a lot of other clubs around the, uh, around the world are, are um, you know, sending out single casks. They do their best to uh, emulate the original article. Um, and some of them are very, very good, but I still think that ours are probably a little bit better. Um, but anyway, uh, starting then, you know, they're sourcing whiskeys from distilleries all over Scotland, obviously starting with just a few distilleries and then that number growing and growing and growing. And over the years, you know, uh, tens of thousands of casks pass through um, the tasting panel. And, you know, whether the whiskey is three years old or 30 years old, in this case, 38 years old, we'll get to more of that in a minute, it's, it's all about the flavor. And we can't stress that enough at the society. It's really all about the flavor. How is this whiskey speaking to our panelists on that day? Does it, does it have so much to offer that we, we just can't put it off any longer? Do we think that maybe if we let it rest in its cask, it, it will give us even more in a couple more years? Um, maybe we wanna take those contents and put them into an additional maturation cask. Um, that's really the, the, the driving force behind what we do to, to put forth the most flavorful and best whiskey for our members. Um, so again, age typically really doesn't matter to us. You know, we're, we're not concerned about making sure that everything is at least 12 years old or 15 years old or whatever. You know, um, these days you will see some younger whiskeys on the website for sure. Um, and, and for a number of reasons, our tasting panel felt that these guys are ready to go now. And, um, you know, it's, it's fun, I think, to, to kind of feel the intensity, um, the, the um, kind of raw power of, of a cask strength, uh, cast strength dram, rather, sorry, in its youth, uh, and then be able to add some water and kind of peel back some layers and, and see, what's, uh, see what's beneath the surface. It's, uh, I think, super, super cool um, and, and certainly plays into that sense of discovery that's very, very strong with, with everyone in the society. From those of us who are fortunate enough to um, run the chapter uh, to all of our members out there and, and their friends who get to sit on some really cool tastings, I'm sure. 
Um, but uh, so we're, we're always looking at these casks. And every so often, um, our spirits manager, uh, Ewan Campbell, and those who have come before him in the company will sort of earmark certain casks and, and say, wow, th this is something special. This is something that we should probably forget about for quite some time. Um, that's been going on since the inception of the society in 83. Uh, and today we have about 10 to 15,000 different casks in Scotland. Um, most of them in Glasgow at, at our warehouse. Um, others spread in, in different warehouses around the, uh, around, around the country. So we have quite a bit to draw from. So we're not necessarily in any rush to, to um, bottle many of these casks. And, and a few, a lucky few, do get to bear the term the vaults collection. So these guys are, by and large, our finest, our rarest examples of these makes from these distilleries. And, um, you know, you have to wait a long time to get them. However, when they're released, man, these, these whiskeys are really ready to go. Um, just about all of them are, I'm seeing are typically anywhere between 28 years old. And uh, the oldest that I've seen in my tenure with the society, 38 years old. So mostly around 30 years, which um, I think is an amazing um, sort of window for aged whiskey, you're seeing, you have your primary flavors, your secondary flavors, your tertiary aromas and flavors, and you're really getting into the secondary tertiary um, layers here. So, so th there's a lot more nuance typically, and we're going to find out pretty soon. Um, you sometimes have to be a bit more patient and let the whiskey open. Now, of course, this is an unopened bottle, so I am going to taste this today, but. Uh, I think um, it really behooves everyone to, to maybe not fully judge a whiskey uh, aroma flavor-wise until it's been about two weeks open. Because unlike wine, whiskey does not age in the bottle. You know, it's hermetically sealed and you don't start seeing development until that whiskey is popped. A little bit of uh, liquid is um, alleviated uh, in this glass right here very shortly. And, and then you have some oxygen in there that gets trapped in as you close the, close the cap. So now you have a little bit of oxidation. You have a little bit of development going on. And oftentimes a whiskey will benefit greatly from, uh, from you know, just a week or two kind of open. And then you can really see what's going on in there. But um, obviously this is full throttle stuff. You know, this juice is cask strength always. So you're going to get a lot out of the gate. So... Let's, uh, let's open up the next layer here. Um, you have a nice little button, beautiful packaging here. Uh, nice copper uh, monogram that we switched to last year. Um, and then on the side, we have the, the vaults collection, uh, copper and black. Really beautiful packaging here. Of course, packaging is, is nice, but what really matters is what's in the bottle. However, I think um, whiskey this special should should have a bit of a heightened appeal to it. I think there's nothing wrong with that. So if you'll notice here, you have the full tasting note. Um, now on our bottles, typically you're gonna see a partial bottle note on the label. That's just a, a snippet of the copy. Um, here we have a full tasting note on its own paper that's uh, inserted by hand. And then of course you have your bottle. So a glorious, I'm gonna put this guy back here. Really beautiful packaging. Um, maybe it's good. I have another, this is and this, this whiskey, 95.39 um, is from the space side lossy. So this is a bit more Northern uh, from the central space side uh, towards the Village of Elgin, another whiskey, also from Elgin, 35. This here is a cask 35.2570 Ode to Joy. I figure it might be nice to do kind of a side-by-side -side so you can sort of compare and contrast um, the, uh, the bottles. So of course, this nice flash of copper ribbon tells you that this is indeed the vaults collection, the essentially our ultra 
premium range. Uh, you will see black labels that uh, that will come across on outturns and such, but they they have a black label. They do not have the the uh, ribbon, and they do not have the box, of course. So that certainly differentiates it. You have a bit of a matte black capsule versus the color coded capsule here for um, cask 35. In this case, is a juicy oak and vanilla expression. So the capsule and the age statement both get that that nice blue for the juicy oak and vanilla flavor profile. 12 flavor profiles ranging from young and sprightly to heavily peated. Um, if you recall, Ben did an unboxing of cask 53.322. That was an old and dignified, if, if I recall correctly. This guy is also an old and dignified. Ringing in at, let's see if I can get this up here for you. I hope that comes through. This is a 38 year old whiskey. My goodness gracious. Um, I've tasted a lot of whiskey in my day. I've tasted a lot of beautiful stuff. I'm not sure I've had a, a 38 year old from, from this distillery ever. Um, I did have a 40 year old actually from 35. I had a 40 year old with some colleagues in Glasgow at uh, Bon Accord cask 35.71 called uh, like a hug from your mum. Now, interestingly, that cask 35.71 was 40 years old. That might be the only one I've had, the only single malt, I should say, that I've had that's older than this guy. Um, so this is literally the second oldest whiskey the society in the US has ever released. Um, typically, when you're looking at an age statement like this, you're going to see the old and dignified uh, flavor profile. So it does still get the color coding down below, but the uh, the capsule is a nice matte black, very, very classy. And of course the copper is everywhere. And you have your flash here of the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society on both bottles, differentiating their flavor profiles yet again. So um, that's just a quick little rundown. Obviously the monograms have different coloring but both uh, etched into the bottle. I think that's very, very important. And um, yeah, you know, we, we do our best to, to give you a nice sleek bottle, but also have it be very uh, informative. So as you uh, may have noticed these days, we have, um, if it is a secondary or an additional maturation, you have cast number one and cast number two, which is a, a nice bit of transparency here. On a cask 95.39, it is just one cask. So this whiskey was never moved in its 38 years. It, it always lived in the same cask. So I am getting thirsty. I'm going to let this guy live off to the side here. And I'm really pumped. This, this is, uh, is going to be really wild. Okay, cool. So I'm just going to go ahead and open this guy up. And of course you have the monogram on the top as well. I don't know if that comes through. There you go. There's the lighting right there. So this monogram really, you know, th this really I think emulates the club feel that we're going for. And, um, you know, we want you guys to feel like you're really part of uh, a club, a community, lots of things. So, if there are certain things you want us to do um, to, to help along with that, please, you know, shoot us an email, give us a call. We love talking to you. Um, and if you're not yet a member, if you have any questions at all as we go along, um, you, can, um, you can respond to this uh, feed or you can give us a ring. Very, very happy to discuss whatever you like from, you know, what we can offer you to the latest dram you've had and, and what kind of whiskeys we may have that can... Uh, that can kind of help you along on your journey. Anyway, my journey is about to get a lot cooler. So um, I actually, before I, I remove the foil, but before I pop the top on any of my society bottles, I like to do a quick inversion. Um, I'm doing it twice here because I'm on camera. It's usually just once, but um, two things this does. All of our bottles are cast strength. So there are a lot of essential oils 
sometimes they may settle. So, you know, you could just mix up that solution and kind of get those essential oils uniformly uh, dispersed throughout the, uh, the bottle. And secondly, it, it's going to moisten your cork a bit. So if you are, for instance, purchasing a bottle of this, you're probably keeping it for special occasions and you might have it for a while. So when you invert, you're then moistening that cork so it doesn't, you know, rip off or dry out and fall off when, uh, when you're opening it. Wow. Okay. Here we go. I hope I'm not going too fast. Like I said, this is my first, this is only my second time doing any sort of uh, social media thing. I'm not on social media at all. So, uh, you know, so far so good, I hope. I don't know. Anyway, uh, nice moist cork. So mission accomplished. And I mean, <laughs> the uh, the aromas are, are already leaping out of the bottle. I don't even have it in the glass. I am using a whiskey nosing glass. Some might call it a copita. I sent all of the uh, monogram glasses to Ben and Jenna, who I'm sure you know very well. Um, so I have these old school ones. So if you notice, it's the old roundel and old font. But you know what? I think it's super cool. And, and this was the branding when I first joined the society. And it kind of reminds you that we are custodians for this club. You know, um, we, we, are, we are carrying on a tradition that's been going on a long time. So um, always good to keep that in mind um, and, and very humbling. Uh, equally humbling will be trying this whiskey. Um, so I'm going to give myself a healthy dram because it is after 12 p.m. in Brooklyn, New York, and I think I deserve it. So um, I have a white table here. If you don't have a white table when you're tasting, um, you, can, you can use just a white piece of paper or something just to give an idea of the color. Um, and this is a gorgeously sort of bronzed color, little flecks of gold coming through. Um, I'm not really up on my all my um, Crayola crayon colors, but you know, it, it that, that bronzing is, is quite nice. Um, for all you uh, all you wine lovers out there, this this might this might remind you of like kind of like an old Chenin Blanc or something like that. Uh, that, that sees a bit of uh, a bit of bronzing from the Loire Valley. Anyway, uh, neither here nor there. So gorgeous color. I am uh, going to keep my mouth open. Now, hold on. Before we get in here, I don't want to rush any of this because it's just amazing. So let's take a look at the ABV here, 53%. So not crazy, but for 38 years, and again, I can't stress this enough, 38 years in the cask, um, 53% is still pretty ballsy. I mean, that, that's got some oomph to it, I think. You know, I would imagine after 38 years in, in cast, like it, it might be, um, I don't know, uh, barely 43, something like that. But in any case, obviously a constellation of factors uh, go into how, how a cask ages. Um, and, uh, and and this one seemed to seems to have uh, retained a good amount of alcohol. The uh, the angels may have been lazy or they, they just wanted to keep as much of this in place for us as possible. So anyway, um, a little bit more information before I get in there. And oh boy, I'm really jonesing, but I'm trying to be cool here. I'm trying to be cool, Ben. Um, anyway, uh, so this was distilled January 15th, 1982. Um, I was five. Uh, almost, I was almost five. I was four turning five. Um, and this is from the Speyside Lossy. This is distillery number 95, um, of which we've gotten some really, really beautiful expressions. Probably for the last year or so, there was a bit of a year and a half, um, bit of a pause when we took over the society from Alan Shane and his family. Um, we didn't really see much from 95 until, until, you know, probably mid-2019. Um, mid so really wonderful to have it back. Very dynamic expressions. In, in some ways, typical space side, a lot of orchard fruits, a lot of really nice cabinet spice. And 95 gives you terrific um, texture, voluptuousness. Um, and uh, hopefully this is the same here. 
Uh, anyway, the title, Indian Summer in a Japanese Garden. Uh, my colleagues will tell you that I am probably wound a little tight most of the time. So I'm really looking forward to the Zen experience that a title like this implies. Anyway, I got to get my nose in here. So Slonjava, um, this is one of the best parts of this job, I assure you. So here we go. Ooh. Wow, so I'm keeping my nose open. Excuse me, my nose, of course, it's open. My mouth open. I'm keeping my mouth open just to kind of keep any sort of heat that might be um, still in the whiskey at bay so I can get the most out of the aromas. And with a whiskey like this, you don't want to rush. You really don't. So right about here, I'm getting some, some really, really beautiful dried fruit, maybe a bit of fig. Caramelized, kind of a creme brulee, like a, a rummy creme brulee, if you will. Like a rum raisin. If we were to take rum raisin ice cream and somehow make it into a creme brulee. That's a lot of the sort of top note I'm getting here. Mm. And now as I get really get my nose into the glass and roll it around. Ooh. Lots and lots of dried fruits still coming out. Bit of almost like saltwater taffy. Something, uh, what's the word? What's the word I'm looking for here? Oh man, it's escaping me. But it doesn't matter because now I'm moving on to even more things. The, the, the cupboard is like opening up, the spice cupboard. Oh, I'm getting cinnamon, I'm getting nutmeg. Something a little earthier, cardamom. Oh, wow. Okay, I'm gonna take a little break for a second because now I'm like starting to get carried away here with these, uh, with these aromas. I should mention, this whiskey saw all 38 years in a refill sherry. But so at one point, the cask had sherry in it exclusively, likely Oloroso sherry. Um, and then it was used a few times for whiskey. Do we know exactly how many times? No, but I can tell you by the nose, probably in, in my best estimation, probably third, maybe not second use, um, but third, fourth use of the barrel. There's some really, really beautiful dried, uh, dried fruit aromas coming through that are very much Oloroso to me. I'm personally not getting any nuttiness quite yet, which I sometimes often get with when I'm sipping actual Oloroso sherry. But the cupboard spice is fantastic. There, there's so many different things in there. The Indian summer part of it, I absolutely get. I mean, there's this sort of crisp, um, like, just imagine like walking through through a, an apple orchard with, you know, somewhat damp, but also kind of dried from the sun, like leaves kind of crinkling under your feet. Because, yeah, I'm getting a lot of kind of damp earth now. 
and maybe it's just the power of my own suggestion, but I am getting some kind of red skinned apple coming through. Wow, this is, uh, I don't know how much time you have, but this is something that, I mean, needs a good deal of time, I would think. Wow. So, I, I mean, I've just been nosing it for a, a couple minutes now, but. But yeah, there's there's a lot to talk about in here. And you're so so basically I'm starting with a lot of dried fruit, going from there to, to a lot of cabinet spice, and, and then getting into these earthier aromas. And 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 I really think that that's that's kind of that secondary, um, secondary flavor profile, tertiary flavor profile that is that is being revealed here. You know, um, I would I would venture to guess that 15 years ago, this whiskey was booming with ripe, ripe fruit. Now you're getting a lot more of that raisinated character. And, you know, it's, it's more of almost like a stewed. Think about cutting up some red skinned apples and kind of, you know, stewing them down, maybe sauteing them in a little butter and cinnamon. But these stewed orchard fruits, that's, that's, that's what I'm getting. <laughs> really, really, really beautiful nose. I mean, I do events in New York, and you know, and kind of the what uh, what Jim Gaffigan, the comedian, I think, refers to as the corridor of hate. Uh, his words, not mine. But uh, DC, basically, up to Boston. So I'm I'm based in New York, and so I, I do these events around. And uh, any of you who have been to those events with me know that I, I kind of carry on like this with just about any whiskey you put in front of me. But man, this one is freaking special. And well, it should be. I mean, in, 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 in this line, I mean, a tip of the cap to you and the team across the pond because, geez, this, uh, this is a killer nose. All right, enough nosing. I, I mean, I would encourage you, if when you purchase this bottle, that you see how long I spent nosing and maybe double that, because it's going to really be worth your time. But I know people are busy, uh, even in lockdown, and we should probably get on with it. Okay. A lot of honey at the entry, a lot of honey. Um, morphing to the cabinet spice, the cinnamon is back for sure. Um, boy, so much honey character, wow. It's like mouth coating. So it, it initially kind of envelops the mouth in this really, really gorgeous kind of like earthy honey. But then kind of on the mid palate, it switches back to those cabinet spices, the cinnamon, the nutmeg. Um, I don't get the earthy, the cardamom any, any longer. Some kind of floral aspects now, almost like a like a potpourri of sorts. I'm tasting what one might smell when you walk into like an old timey arts and crafts store, with like different potpourris around, like lots of dried things, dried fruits, dried flowers, that kind of thing. That's coming through on the finish, and the finish is just going and going and going. The apple is returning, the, the kind of stewed red apple, spiced apple. I mean, that's a pretty impressive finish. And this has a ton of energy for 38 years old. I, I mean, this whiskey 
has, uh, pardon my, pardon my language. This whiskey has a shitload of oomph to it. Like it really does. Wow. And sorry, man. That's probably why you shouldn't have me do these things. Wow. I know I'm supposed to add water now, but I personally like to take a few different sips neat because I want to kind of nail down the entry, the mid palate, the finish, then kind of go back and put it all together. And of course now the palate's acclimated a bit more to the to the uh, alcohol, so you can kind of get a little a little bit more depth there with the with the next uh, the next taste. Oh man, gorgeous! Wow, the sherry is I mean by no means any sort of that struck match. Um, it's very very clean, very precise. Um, lots of dried fruit. Lots of the cabinet spice coming through. Not a lot of nuttiness. I mean, if you really want to kind of, if I want to use my imagination, I could reach for some like peanut brittle uh, type type elements, but that's not really at the fore. That's 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 pr pretty pretty far in the background. But bright fruit to begin with, more stewed fruit as as it as it works its way down the palate. Oh. That honey texture is just running throughout. So you you kind of have the honey coming around the sides of the of the palate, and then just spice, stewed fruit, uh, dried fruit, that potpourri on the finish. I mean, really, really cool stuff. Wow, this is uh, this is very very nice whiskey. So I'm, I'm getting more and more jacked up as I, like, <laughs> I get into this. So, I mean, maybe I need a, a bit more of it to achieve my Zen place that this implies because I'm, I'm just really, really excited to, to explore it. Anyway, I have, uh, I have a little water here. This is actually distilled water. Good for cleaning bottles. Um, so I'm just doing literally... Two drops for now. And of course, it's always fun to see that visometric whirl where the water is combining with the essential oils of the barrel. It's a fun little nerdy thing if you're hanging out with your buddies. I'm going to go ahead and add a couple more because... As many of you who attended the um, tasting panel experience in 2019 might recall, Charlie, when asked, um, Charlie mm -hmm. McLean, I should qualify that, Charlie McLean, one of the foremost whiskey experts in the world, when asked, how do I dilute the whiskey for my palate? He, uh, he let us know that, you know, that any sort of heat or what he calls prickle you perceive with your nose uh, when, when nosing the whiskey neat should fully dissipate when you uh, reduce it with water. So that's really reducing to your own palate. And I need literally just one more drop, bear with me. Man, that smells good. All right, very good, so now I have done my best to dilute to my palate. Oh, and it and it's just opening up a ton more of confection. I mean, the honey that I got on the palate, the creme brulee that I got on the nose initially, that rum raisin creme brulee, it's there. But now we're, I'm, I'm getting other things. I mean, really like gooey, Caramel and like kind of salted caramel. Oh, yeah. So getting a ton of confection. Now I'm getting more like actual just ripe, ripe red, red, red apple fruit. And I should say you might get 
none of this, by the way. I mean, of course, we we all have unique palettes and a unique olfactory database that we work with. I mean, that's what that's what makes a lot of this really fun to taste with with other people because you, you get their perspective as well. So if you don't get these things, fear not. Uh, you're just going to get other awesome things. Oh, yeah. And, and now, like, it's not minerality like you might get on the coast or something, but just that, that touch of, like, kind of damp earth that's so endearing in this because you have all this confection kind of whirling around the glass. And then to ground it all, you have this, this really cool, like, just autumnal feel like this, this, like, like I mentioned, you know, maybe, maybe it's early morning or maybe it just rained in like an apple orchard. Like you have those kinds of smells. Um, the leaves are, are still kind of on the, on the trees, but also on the ground. We're not quite there yet, at least here in the Northeast, but we'll be there real soon. And man, what a, what a perfect whiskey to accompany that kind of environment. Yeah, that's quite nice. All right, on the, on the palette now. Mm. Well, the honey's still there. The honey is <laughs> even richer. I mean, it's really gorgeous. Wow. The, the, the cabinet spice um, is is mellowed out by the water. So there might have actually been some hotter spice, almost like, a, like those cinnamon ball things. What the hell are they called when we were kids? Um, red hots. Uh, so you almost maybe had some kind of red hot type cinnamon before. Now it's now it's much more integrated, almost like, you know, like cinnamon from French toast and, and maple syrup or something like that. Mm, yeah. Mouth coating, mouth coating, really sublime texture, really, really nice. And I'm speaking, but <laughs> I still feel the, the, the flavors coming up, you know, I mean, there's quite a bit going on in the finish. Oh man. It's uh, th this is this is a, a pretty fantastic whiskey if I do say so myself. Well, well, I mean, we're all going to get kind of slightly different things from from a whiskey when, when we taste them. But I, the big takeaway here, regardless of the actual aromas and flavors that one might be getting, are the depth. The texture. I mean, these two things are going to set this whiskey apart from a lot of the other whiskeys in your collection um, from the society and, and, and beyond. Um, pretty rare for us to release a single malt that is 38 years old and actually a single malt, not a grain. And, you know, sporting this ABV 53% with tremendous body, tremendous verve. I mean, that's, it's got a lot, it's got a lot going on. This is not a shy whiskey, but you know, it, it, it reveals quite a bit. Um, I really look forward to coming back and tasting it in a, like a week or two. Um, maybe I'll do another one of these in a week or two. That could, that, that could be a, a good exercise. Um, but wow. Really, really nice. So uh, just to wrap up, I, don't, I have no idea how long I've been going here. I fell down the tasting rabbit hole. Um, but anyway, uh, I thank you for tuning in. And Ben, thank you for letting me do this. This is awesome. I hope I get to do it again. Um, and uh, just note, this is a uh, cask 95.39. Oh, boy, this is inverted here. Jeez, Louise. Okay. Nope. I'll get there. There we are. Cast 95.39, Indian summer in a Japanese garden, 38 years old, 
spent all 38 years in a refill sherry butt, 53% ABV from uh, the space side lossy. Absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous dram. Um, certainly the price tag is, is what it is. Uh, I think for 38 years old, it's a pretty good value, all things considered. Um, I, I know that not every member will get a chance to, to taste this, but I really, really hope you do. Um, it's, it's a pretty, pretty amazing juice here. So, um, thank you so much for tuning in. And, uh, if you have any questions, reach out to me, reach out to the team. We'd love to hear from you and, uh, Slam Java. Thanks so much guys.